Let's start our lecture today. Uh, today, our goal is to finish the chapter of discrete time Fourier transform. So next Wednesday, we will start a new chapter, the Laplace transform, which is an extension of the continuous time Fourier transform. Uh, so if we can go fast, then hopefully we will have an early release today. So last week, we introduced the concept of discrete time Fourier transform. Uh, the definition of discrete time Fourier transform is uh, analogous to that of uh, continuous time. So these two equations, the first one is the Fourier transform. The second one is the inverse Fourier transform. So I emphasize the one difference with uh, continuous time, the integral in inverse Fourier transform is not over minus infinity to plus infinity, but it's over an interval with length two pi because the x of e exponential j omega is a periodic signal with a fundamental period two pi. Okay. And then we look at some examples how to calculate a discrete time Fourier transform. And those examples are mainly the series with a common ratio A with magnitude less than one. Uh, they have different forms, for example, uh, n absolute value. And then we learned some uh, lin uh, properties uh, of discrete time Fourier transform so that we can conveniently get the new discrete time Fourier transform after some time domain uh, transformation, say linearity, time shifting, uh, and uh, time expansion. The last, the last property we learned is the convolution. So in time domain, if we have convolution of two signals, then in frequency domain, it is the, it corresponds to the multiplication of their respective Fourier transforms. And this property is useful in calculating the response of an LTI system. Now we are given a discrete time LTI system for which we know it's unit impulse response, H over N, a discrete time signal over N, Given an input signal x of n, how do we determine y of n? Last chapter, we learned that we can use Fourier series. So x of n, if it is a periodic signal, we can write it as a linear combination of exponential j k omega zero n, where omega zero is the fundamental frequency, uh, two pi divided by capital N of the discrete time signal. And then we can calculate h exponential j k omega zero as this weighted sum of exponentials. So the weights are the small h of n. Then y of n is the same format uh, of linear combination with input with this capital H inserted in between. That's what we learned last chapter. And even before, uh, in chapter two, when we first learned the LTI system, uh, we learned the convolution. Uh, we can calculate discrete time convolution, but uh, depending on the structure of input signal X and uh, impulse response H, the convolution can be sometimes complicated. And this chapter we learned to determine Y of N using Fourier transform. It can be applied to general X of N regardless it is uh, periodic or not. So we can apply the convolution property. First, calculate the Fourier transform of X and H respectively, so denote them as capital X, capital H. Then calculate capital Y, which is capital X times capital H. And because in time domain, small y is the convolution of uh, uh, small X and H, then in the frequency domain, capital Y is the multiplication of X and H for each frequency omega. Then y of n is just the inverse Fourier transform of capital Y, and we obtain y of n. So the same discrete time LTI system, we can represent it in the time domain, uh, calculate output using convolution, or in the frequency domain, calculate output using the multiplication. So this capital H of exponential j omega, it is the Fourier transform of small h over n, same to the continuous time case, it is called the frequency response of the discrete time 
RTI system. Now let's look at an example how to apply this uh, tool to uh, a given LTI system. Uh, we look at the particular kind of LTI system whose input output can be described by this difference equation. So it says the following. We have input signal x of n. So x of n minus k, where k is an integer, can be understood as the time shift of n by k units. Here we assume k is non-negative, so we always shift it to the right. If we shift it on the time axis to the right, then it is considered a delayed signal, right? If we shift it to the right by one unit, then the new signal is delayed compared to the original signal by one time unit. So this delayed version x of n minus k, so delayed by k units, it is weighted by a constant coefficient bk, and we sum up all these delay versions from k equals zero, which is the original signal, to k equals capital M, which is delayed by capital M. This is the right-hand side. And this linear system, linear time invariant system, its output is also a linear combination with the same format as the right-hand side. So delayed version y by k units from k equals zero to n, weighted by a k. So you can check using the knowledge learned in chapter one that this is indeed a linear and time invariant system. So linearity, if the new, if we have a new input which is linear combination of two original inputs, then the output is the same coefficient linear combination. Time invariance, if we delay the, if we shift the input by certain amount n zero, then the output is shifted by the same amount n zero. So you can use those properties to validate that this is indeed an LTI system. But now in this chapter, our question is how to determine the frequency response capital H of E exponential J omega and the small h of n unit impulse response from this relationship. And the answer is to use discrete time Fourier transform. So we can apply the Fourier transform on both sides of this equation. Because of linearity on the left-hand side, the result the Fourier transform is still a linear combination with the same summation, the same coefficient a k. The Fourier transform of small y n minus k, let me flip back to a previous slide, this is a time shifting property, right? If we shift xn to x of n minus n zero, then its Fourier transform is the original capital X multiplies exponential minus j omega n zero. N zero is the shifted amount. Apply this time shift property to this equation. Y of n minus k, since we shift it by k, then it's multiplying capital Y with exponential minus j k omega. And same to the right hand side, Linearity, so the same linear combination, x of n minus k is Fourier transform of capital X times exponential minus j k omega. So why is this structure useful? Because on the left hand side, all the terms inside the summation has, have a common factor capital Y. On the right hand side, they all have a common factor capital X. So we divide X to the left hand side. We divide summation k, a k exponential minus j k omega to the right hand side. So what we get is y divided by x is this polynomial of b k divided by polynomial of a k. And from this figure, we know that y divided by x is the capital H. Okay. So now we have obtained the frequency response capital H of the LTI system. Now one thing to notice that it is possible for the denominator of this uh, fraction to be, uh, to be zero. So for some omega, uh, but here we assume that uh, when omega approaches the value, say omega star, omega star makes the denominator zero. When omega approaches that value, the numerator is also uh, approaching zero. 
so that the numerator divided by the denominator achieves a finite limit. And also this limit is uh, the same as the h of exponential j omega star if we calculate it from the beginning. In other words, h of exponential j omega is continuous at omega star. That's the reason we can express it in this expression without uh, additional discussion with uh, the case denominator equals zero. So after calculating h, we can apply inverse Fourier transform to obtain h of n. Here I didn't uh, show the detailed procedure because it will apply the partial fraction expansion that we used for the continuous time case, uh, which you will see in the later example. So here is an example. We have an LTI system. Input is x of n, then its output is y n. The relationships can be described by this difference equation. The first order difference equation because it is written up to y of n minus one. The first question determine frequency response capital H of the LTI system, just applying this procedure. So apply Fourier transform and y divided by x is capital H. So I will give you two minutes for exercise. Thanks. Okay, let's look at the answer for this question. Uh, we apply uh, frequency, uh, a Fourier transform. So small y is Fourier transform is capital Y. The second term, because it's delayed by one unit, multiply exponential minus j omega, coefficient one over three because of linearity on the right-hand side is capital X. So capital Y divided by capital X is one divided by one plus one over three exponential minus j omega. I just apply the time shift property to obtain free transform. Then the next question is, determine the unit impulse response, small h of n for this LTI system. So to obtain that, we can apply a previous result. If we look to look at the exercise one, we have this x of n, which is a to the power n u of n, then it's a Fourier transform is one minus a exponential minus j omega. It applies to the case where a magnitude or a absolute value is less than one. If we just apply this result, to this example, uh, we just show the answer. Because here, if we compare this result and the formula here, we can get A equals minus one over three. So it's inverse Fourier transform. Small h of n is minus one over three to the power n, un. This is the small h of n. And then the next question is, given the input signal, capital X, which is one over four to the power n u of n, what is the output y of n? To calculate the output y of n, we can use the Fourier transform, which is capital X multiplies capital H. And he, I, they, I leave it to you as an exercise to calculate capital X first and then 
use this result of capital H in question one to obtain capital Y. So uh, a, remind, uh, a reminder is to apply the partial fraction expansion. Uh, if you want to apply inverse Fourier transform to capital Y to obtain small y. Uh, not to expand the denominator, but rather to split capital Y in the form of uh, in the form of something that you can directly apply the formula because we already know this formula. Let's look at the result. Uh, of course, we can use the convolution we learned in chapter two to calculate y of n. Actually, for this example, when both small h and small x are these uh, uh, series with common ratios, in chapter two, we show the example how to calculate its uh, uh, discrete time convolution. But here, let's use Fourier transform. Just apply the same result here. So A equals one over four for this particular X, right? A equals one over four. So we can replace A with one over four in this result. The Fourier transform of X is one divided by one over four exponential minus two. Capital Y is therefore capital X times capital H. So the multiplication of these two terms we want to apply the partial fraction expansion. So split has two terms. The first term, one divided by one, no, one minus one over four exponential minus j omega, the coefficient is a. The second term with plus one over three, the coefficient is b. And the standard procedure of partial fraction expansion is to multiply the denominator again, so that with a, we multiply additional one plus one over three exponential, with B multiplies additional one minus one over four exponential. And we can extract a common coefficient, so one over three A minus one over four B exponential minus J omega, plus the constant A plus B. So the capital Y written in form one and written in form two, they should be identical the denominator is already identical. So the numerator, we need the exponential minus j omega term to have a coefficient zero because there is no such term in one, in the expression one. We need a plus b to, e, to be equal to one because it is just the constant factor in expression one. 
we have a set of two equations with two unknowns. So we can use the linear, simple linear algebra to solve for it. Uh, the result is A and B are given here. So Y of exponential J omega written in two terms with A and B known now. So we can apply the inverse Fourier transform again using this formula, right? So this is the frequency domain, then, then to the time domain is a to the power n u of n. The first term a equals one over four, the second term a equals minus one over three. Because, so in this formula, this is a minus sign. This is minus sign, minus a, right? So here minus one over four, it is plus one over four to the power n. Plus one over three, it is minus one over three to the power n. And this function of n, the signal over time n, is our output y of n. Now let's look at a, another example, which is a little bit more complicated to consolidate our knowledge in applying discrete time Fourier series. Again, we are given a difference equation to describe the input output of the, of the given LTI system. Uh, this time on the left and right side, the difference is taken up to y n minus two. I determine the frequency response, capital H of this RTI system, again applying for your transform, uh, give you two minutes for exercise. Right, there is one more frequency term in the denominator. Okay, I believe this is not hard. Uh, on the left hand side, we have capital Y of exponential J omega in every term and the coefficient just uh, follows the linearity uh, principle. So one minus three divided by four plus one over eight. And for Y of N minus one exponential minus J omega, Y of N minus two exponential minus J minus two J omega. Uh, on the right hand side, just two times capital X. So Y divided by X, easy to calculate, is a polynomial with, uh, it's a fraction with a denominator, a polynomial omega. And then determine the unit impulse response, small h of n from this capital H. But we need a little bit of transformation with denominator. We need to factorize the uh, denominator as one minus something times one minus something. So you can check that this is correct because for the exponential minus J omega term, it's one over two plus one over four, which is three divided by four. Uh, for the exponential minus two J omega term, it's one over two times one over four, one over eight. Okay. Now, I will leave it to you as an exercise uh, to calculate small h of n. Again, try to apply the partial fraction expansion.
yes, as someone correctly pointed out, the number of the terms actually depends on the order of the difference equation. So in this case, we have a second order polynomial on the denominator, so we split it as two terms, right? One term with A, one term with coefficient B, so the two, the two uh, factors uh, on the denominator are, are both uh, first order polynomials. And then with the same trick to combine them together so that the denominator is identical to the expression one, the numerator is a linear combination of A and B. So for the uh, first order term exponential minus J omega, the coefficient is this, the constant is A plus B. We make them uh, respectively equal to the coefficient in expression one. So the first order term coefficient is zero, no first order term. The constant A plus B, uh, after solving this uh, set of equations, A and B, we obtain them, obtain the capital H, and then just apply the previous result uh, four times one over two to the power n, two times, so minus two times one over four to the power n. So this one over two and one over four in the base of the power are respectively these numbers in the denominator. One over two, one over four, one over two, one over four. Then the next question, uh, we have this kind of input, which is, delta n minus one over two delta of n minus one. Delta n is the standard unit in powers in discrete time that occurs at n equals zero. Delta of n minus one is its time shifted version. Uh, we have, we had a previous result given, giving the uh, Fourier transform of delta n and its arbitrary time shifted form. Try to apply this result to obtain capital X, the Fourier transform first, and then calculate capital Y using capital X times capital H. Okay, uh, exercise in two minutes. Well, in principle, uh, from capital Y to small y, uh, you, we usually, we often apply the partial fractions function, but uh, the purpose of this particular question is to show that sometimes the result is simpler than you imagine. Okay, so the Fourier transform of capital X, uh, the first term delta N is Fourier transform is just one. The second term is exponential minus J omega N zero. Since we shift it by one, then N zero equals one. So the second term is exponential minus J omega times one, uh, uh, coefficient minus one over two using linearity. So this is capital X. Capital Y is capital X times capital H. This is where the simplification occurs. The denominator and numerator, uh, they have one factor cancel each other. And the result is simpler, two divided by one or one minus one over four, exponential minus j omega. So the result y of n 
two times one over four to the power n u of n. So here we finished the study of discrete time Fourier transform. So let's go back to the outline to review what we learned this chapter. Uh, so we learned what is discrete time Fourier transform, the two formulas for transform and inverse transform, and then properties, linearity, time shift, time expansion, and the convolution. The convolution property applied to the discrete time LTI system so that we can always calculate capital X times capital H first, then apply inverse Fourier transform. And the particular kind of LTI system is those described by differential equations, uh, difference equations. So discrete time is difference equations. In continuous time, it was differential equations. Difference equations, uh, we can apply the time shift property to get its Fourier transform and then calculate capital H, then calculate small h, capital Y, small y, and so on. So next chapter, uh, next Wednesday lecture, we will start learning a new chapter, which is uh, Laplace transform. It basically extends the frequency from j omega to a general complex number. So a real part sigma plus j omega uh, denoted by s. So that's just a preview of the next uh, chapter. And uh, till now we have proceeded, uh, proceeded uh, Eight, eight weeks, sorry, nine weeks of this term. And there are four weeks left. As you will see, as we go further into those different transforms, because of analogy with the previous knowledge we learned, uh, our progress is faster and faster. So hopefully we can finish Laplace transform and the further chapter Z transform in three weeks. And then use the last week as a final review of the entire term. Uh, hopefully that will get you prepared for the final exam. Okay. Okay, uh, we have a 10 minutes early release today. Uh, please uh, wait for the uh, tutorial today given by the TA. Okay. See you next Wednesday.